Hi everybody, and this is just an extra quick tip video on a software tool that I see some people get somewhat confused in our aligner biomechanics, and let me just speak about it. And it is the Byte Jump software tool. So I have a case here of my own clinic, which is missing his upper right lateral. His upper midline is over to the right side of his facial midline. His lower midline is um, matched. We're going to be using class 3 elastics on the right side to move his buckle segment on the right side forward and we'll use some IPR on the left side along with some IPR on the lower arch to align his teeth. So that's my orthodontic plan. Now here in this ClinCheck isn't where it started. So treatment plan number one, the first one that I received from Align, wasn't really my plan. You can see here the upper midline stayed still. The lower midline was moved to the right side with a lot of IPR. So the lower midline moved over to the right and that didn't make sense for my patient. So I had to make some changes to the ClinCheck plan. And of course, I have all my records here uploaded and I can do that. And I'm not going to go through the whole details of why I have this plan, but what I want to talk about is the bite jump tool. You see here right now the bite jump is throughout treatment. What does that mean? Well, this gray bar is running through the middle of the ClinCheck and as it moves, it is assumed that my patient is going to be wearing class 3 elastics on the right side, maybe class 2 elastics on the left side, maybe not, so I have them there just in case. And I've made several modifications to the ClinCheck and you can see now the lower midline is more or less staying still. The upper midline is moving over to the right. So let's look at that in our dental superimposition. So if we look at the upper midline, it is now moving over. The lower midline is not moving as much as it was before. And that's my result. But the question is, what if I, you see I'm ready to approve. So my approve sign is here, which tells me that by changing the bite jump, let's say I hide the correction altogether. Now the gray line has disappeared. You see a bunch of aligners. They look just like the aligners that I had before, but this time the midline is not corrected. The upper midline didn't move over, and so what happened there? Aren't we moving the upper midline? Well, what we're doing is we're hiding the bite jump. It's as if the patient's not going to wear elastics. This is the result we're going to get. Notice I can still approve the aligners, which means changing the bite jump doesn't change your ability to approve aligners because it doesn't change the aligners. It's really just changing what you see visually on the screen as to whether the patient will wear elastics or not. Let's say I put the bite jump at the end of treatment. Now this gray bar is over here. Now whether this bite jump is because the patient doesn't wear aligner elastics, they get to stage 28, they say, sorry, I couldn't wear elastics, so now I send him for jaw surgery to move his maxilla to the right place. Well, let's say the patient makes that decision. I could order the clean check the way it is now. I'm ready to approve. Let's say the patient says, no, I want to wear elastics throughout treatment. So then what I'm going to tell him is, okay, well, if you're wearing enough elastics throughout treatment, at the beginning of treatment, this is your sagittal relationship. When we're halfway through treatment, this better be your sagittal relationship if you're wearing enough elastics. And when we're towards the end of the treatment, this better be your sagittal relationship because otherwise we're not going to get to this point. And I can teach the patient through the at the end of treatment, I could show it to him and say, because if you don't change that sagittal relationship, you're not going to get to a good place in your treatment. Your midlines will be off and you're going to have trauma from occlusion on your front teeth here and probably a posterior open bite because of anterior interferences. So there's a lot to be taught from the ClinCheck, but notice that all of these changes, whether I change the bite jump to at the beginning of treatment, whether I hide it all together, I can still approve my aligners, which means that this is not making any change to the shape of the aligners. This I make a contrast to, for example, if I look at the attachments on the upper centrals, you notice that the one on the upper right central is the way I like to use it, which is horizontal beveled to the gingival, gingival flush to the tooth surface. But the attachment 
on the upper left central is not horizontal bevel gingival ginger, gingival flush to the tooth surface and neither is the one on the lateral so I'm going to take both of those attachments and bevel them so they're beveled gingival flush to the tooth surface because that's the way I like to use my attachments. This is an optimized extrusion attachment so I can't really change it on the upper left too and I'll be using that just the way it is. So I'm going to make that change to the aligners but notice now the aligners I have to submit the change. So I've changed it and now that changes the shape of aligners so I have to submit this change. If I undo that change that I made then I'm going to get back to the ability to approve it, which I'm not going to approve it yet because I still want to make those changes. So I hope I've explained thoroughly as to what this bite jump choices are. They're really just choices as how you want to see the screen. They don't change the mechanics that are going to occur in the mouth from your aligners. Thank you, and I hope you've enjoyed this quick tip video from yourorthocoach.com. See you again soon. Bye-bye.